Okay, so today we're going to be going over um, the representation of numbers on a computer for the EES 1011 class. You are supposed to be looking at this video um, ahead of time before the class because we're going to be having discussions and exercises within the class associated with this presentation. You will have also uh, been tasked with reading the first chapter of the Stormy Attaway book on MATLAB as well, and there'll be questions in this session on that. So the first thing to discuss is that uh, of the uh, concept of computer memory in MATLAB. So whenever you type a command in MATLAB or a statement in MATLAB, um, MATLAB will immediately interpret and execute that particular statement. Now typically what you're going to be doing is uh, assigning values to variables or changing the values inside of variables to perform useful operations. So this typically causes uh, the program MATLAB to access memory uh, on the computer uh, or if it was in the case of your cell phone it would be uh, looking at um, memory inside of say a, uh, a memory card. Now, on these memory cards, effectively what you've got is the storing of variables with their values and particular addresses in effectively rows uh, inside of the chips of the, uh, of the memory cards. So that's effectively what's going on inside of the memory chips, either inside of your computer or on your smartphones. Let's go for a more concrete example uh, of how we uh, deal with computer memory. Okay, so the thing we're going to do here is we are going to compute, or calculate, the cost of a cylinder that is effectively a column of concrete that is one meter, one meter in radius and 2.5 meters in height uh, if the, con or the concrete costs, in terms of cubic meters, one of two different values, either one point eight or sorry, one hundred eighty-six dollars per cubic meter, or two hundred fourteen dollars per cubic meter. Now, obviously, the two hundred fourteen dollars per cubic meter is going to be the stronger, better concrete. So we're going to have a number of um, commands that we're going to put into. MATLAB. We're going to have we're going to uh, have a command to specify radius. So first command, then height, then volume. Then we're going to specify the, for the first time the cost per cubic meter. Then we're going to talk about the cost or calculate the cost in terms of volume and cost per cubic meter. Then we're going to revisit the variable cost per cubic meter, and we're going to perform another operation. Uh, by modifying the variable called cost per cubic meter. And finally, the seventh operation we're going to do is modifying the, the original value for cost by updating it with a new cost per cubic meter, which we calculated in the previous step. So effectively what's going to be happening is that you're going to uh, type in radius is equal to 1 in MATLAB, and then you're going to hit enter. And the workspace subwindow in MATLAB, which is typically on the right hand side, will associate the value 1 with the variable name radius. And it will store it on some memory device, physical device, some sort of chip or hard drive. The second operation that we do is going to be uh, assigning a value for height in terms of, uh, we're going to assume meters, so 2.5 meters is going to be your height. Volume is going to be calculated uh, by taking the value of height, which we just figured out, multiplied by the square of the radius, multiplied by a constant called pi. And MATLAB already knows what pi is. It will assign a value of 7.8 five, et cetera, uh, meters uh, cubed. From there we assign a new value for cost per cubic meter, 
or this is actually gonna be the first value for cost of, for uh, cost per cubic meter. It will be $186 per cubic meter. After that, we will do a calculation. That calculation will give us a value of about $1,400 or about $1,500 uh, for a column of that particular uh, cost per cubic meter. After that, we reassign a value to cost per cubic meter. So effectively, we are going to update the value, but not the name of the variable. So the value of the variable, and we're going to recalculate cost, and we'll see that the cost of the new column is somewhat more expensive. It'll be about $1,680.75. So conceptually, what's going on is effectively we are putting values uh, into memory, numbers into memory, and each of those numbers takes, you will assume, the same amount of space in memory. And so each of these cards, each of these chips, can only hold so much. So for instance, this one can hold 2 gigabytes worth of data. This one can hold 4 gigabytes worth of data. And this one over here... I think is 32 megabytes or 32 gigabytes worth of data. So each of these cards can hold a certain amount of data and depending on how uh, precise we want to get, the space occupied by each of these will take up, will be more. Double precision being uh, a number that takes up more space than say for instance a single precision floating point number. In MATLAB there are uh, two main ways to specify the amount of precision, and the more precision, typically the better. Um, you can have a 64-bit number, and that's what we call a double precision floating point number, so it has decimal points associated with it, and different bits within that 64 bits uh, is responsible for different parts of the number. So for instance, the biggest bit uh, is responsible for sign, whether it's negative or positive. Now, if you are using uh, a number that doesn't have to be so precise, you can get a 32-bit floating point number. So it has 32 bits instead of 64 bits. Uh, but again, it's structured the same way, where the top bit is, is associated with sign, and then the next set of bits for exponent, and then other parts of the number. So effectively, you can think of what's going on inside of the computer as a bunch of blocks being associated with different aspects of the number. So there'll be a block of memory associated with sign, a block of memory associated with one part of the number, and a block of memory associated with another part of the number uh, as well. So internally in MATLAB, we're effectively uh, representing floating point numbers um, as um, integers, or in this case we're calling them significands, okay, so an integer with uh, a multiplication by some number base 10 or base 2, so this could be a 10 or it could be a 2, with an exponent associated with it. And in this case what we do is we take a really big integer number, the significand, we multiply it by 10, and 10 to the power of negative 3. So effectively, we're going to make 1, 2, 3, 4 really small. It becomes 1.234. The opposite effect would happen if you made this a positive symbol right here. Okay, so you would multiply this by 1,000 instead. So that's effectively what's going on internally in MATLAB when it's storing uh, information in computer memory. Okay, so now what we're going to do is break up into groups of three within the class. So starting on the left-hand side, that is your left-hand side, I want you to gather up in each row in groups of three. Um, and I want you to discuss over the next three to five minutes uh, how each of you has an interest in perhaps uh, developing an engineer engineering application that you would like to build um, that would use, say, a computer microprocessor and memory. So this could be a final year project that you do in fourth year that you might want to start with now, or something that you would like to start a company uh, to do later on down the road. So I want all of you, or each of you, 
to discuss these amongst yourselves and then choose one of those three uh, to potentially nominate to the rest of the class and to discuss uh, with the rest of the class. Dr. Castellucci uh, and myself will ask up to 10 groups to nominate examples from their individual discussions <clears throat> and we will talk about those uh, in a little bit of detail. Possible examples are uh, from a civil engineering perspective would be um, sewer effluent counting. <clears throat> from a, an aerospace perspective it could be an airplane black box. Now in both cases what's going on is that the computer is being used to sense things that are going on either on the airplane or in the sewage system and uh, store those values or manipulate the data uh, that it's receiving possibly to transmit it to a central station or, or to an engineer or to the pilot <clears throat> or somebody else uh, as well to give them information about what's going on. Okay, now the next thing that's going to be happening is that we will be using the Scantron bubble sheets to answer a series of questions. Again, you will be working in groups of three on these. Okay, so working in the same groups of three people. Here's the question. Given a 3-bit memory system, how many different numbers can you store in a one 3-bit memory location? Could it be no numbers? Could it be two different numbers? Could it be three different numbers, 14 separate numbers, or 8? The hint here is that if you had an 8-bit system, it could represent a maximum of 2 to the 8th numbers. So think about that for a minute. Next question. It will be similar to that first question. In the same groups, you will answer, based on a variation of the first question, um, this question number 2. Question number 3. The Attaway text uh, in Chapter 1 describes a command that something. Uh, what you are supposed to be doing before class is to read... chapter one of the Attaway text. Now, you can also bring the PDF or paper copy with you, or you could search for answers to this question using your smartphone during the class. Next, angles by default are in what format in MATLAB? And there will be a few options for you here. With respect to precedence, why do we use parentheses in MATLAB? And then if we have time, after we've done the Scantrons, uh, hopefully there will be time, we will uh, engage in a second discussion, so discussion number two. What are grand challenge type programming related problems in your domain? Now these are big, really important type of challenges. Um, in the past, electric cars were sort of a grand challenge. Self-driving cars were a grand challenge. Um, in the biomedical field, for instance, uh, in the biomedical field, um, tricorders based on, on Star Trek, effectively. Okay, So tricorders of the style that you see in Star Trek uh, are a big deal. And so they're referred to as grand challenge problems. Okay, But maybe in civil engineering or mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, there are other big problems that you personally would like to get involved in. I'd like you to think about that before class. Come to class and have a discussion with your neighbors about that. And then we will ask up to about five groups to nominate examples, and we'll discuss those as a class. Okay, so with that, uh, good luck preparing for the uh, flipped classroom, and we will see you either on Wednesday this week or Thursday.